This is the second video in the series on using Quest Machine. In this video, we'll create a simple exploration quest using Quest Machine's message system. This is what it looks like. The quest is in two stages. The first stage is to explore a circle, and the second stage is to report back. We'll start with the scene that we set up in the first video tutorial. Inspect the quest database that you created, and click the New button to create a new quest. Save that quest as an asset file, and it will open up the Quest Editor window. The Quest Info section has general information about the quest. You can set the title, which is what's displayed in UIs. We can see that it defaults to being trackable in the HUD. The Auto Start section can have conditions. If these conditions become true, the quest starts automatically. But the player will pick up this quest when it's offered by a quest giver. The Offer section also has conditions and text to show when the conditions are unmet and when it's offering the quest. We'll set that offer text. First, we'll show the quest title as a heading, and then in body text, we'll show the offer. This is where the quest giver lays out the quest. The states section has subsections for each state that the quest can be in, waiting to start active, successful, and failed. This content includes text for the dialog UI, journal, HUD, and actions to execute when that state becomes active. We'll set up the quest's active state to show the quest's title as a heading, and we'll save additional text for the individual nodes in the quest. For the successful state, we'll just fill it all out here. A quest can also have counter values, but we won't use those in this tutorial. Now we'll add quest nodes. Right-click on Start and select New Node Condition. Set the ID to Enter Circle. A node can be in any of three states, inactive, active, or true. When a condition node is active, it becomes true when its conditions are true. The nodes are where we'll add context-specific text. Journal text is shown in the Quest Journal UI, and HUD text is shown in the on-screen HUD. Now right-click on the Condition node and select New Node Success. When the Condition node becomes true, the Success node becomes active. When the success node is active, it immediately becomes true and sets the entire quest to successful. So when the success node becomes true, let's show some alert text. This is shown in Quest Machine's Alert UI. Now we need to specify the conditions under which the condition node becomes true. In the Conditions section, select Message Quest Condition. Messages are strings that can be passed back and forth in Quest Machine. Let's make this condition listen for the message Explored Circle. So the message is explored and the parameter is circle. When the node receives that message, it will become true and activate the success node. Now we just need to assign this quest to a quest giver. Inspect the quest giver, go down to the quests list, and add the quest. Then inspect the mysterious circle. Add a sphere collider similarly to how we set up the quest giver in the previous tutorial. Add a trigger event, 
And now we're going to add a general purpose component called Quest Control. This component has several methods for controlling quests, but we're going to use just one to send a message. Assign Quest Control to On Trigger Enter and select Send to Message System. This will send a message to Quest Machine's message system. In the string field, enter explored colon circle. The colon separates the message from the parameter. When the player enters the circle, it will send this message. If the quest is active and listening for the message, it will respond. This is how it plays. We can see the alert message down at the bottom when the quest became successful. Now let's extend this quest with the second stage to report back. We'll make a duplicate of this quest and name it Explore Circle and Return. We'll assign this quest also to the database. Add another condition node. Call this node return. We also need to give this quest a unique ID. Now when the enter circle node becomes true, the return node will become active. When this node becomes active, we'll show an alert to remind the player to report back to the captain. And we'll add some text to show when this node is active. Once again, we're going to use a message condition, but in this case, we're going to use one of the built-in messages. Select Tools, Pixel Crushers, Quest Machine, Quest Reference. This is a reference window of commonly used strings that you can copy to the clipboard so that you don't have to type them in manually. We'll use the Discussed Quest message, which is sent just after a quest is discussed in dialog. The parameter is the ID of the quest. So when the return node is active and the player has discussed this quest with the quest giver, the return node becomes true and the success node becomes active. We double check that the quest is assigned to the database, and we assign it to the quest giver. This is what it looks like. We enter the trigger collider, and the enter circle node becomes true. If we open the quest editor at runtime, we can see the runtime state of the quest.
And this is what it looks like in the journal. Now you don't have to use the quest control component to send messages. In scripts, you can use the method pixelcrushers.messagesystem.sendMessage, or you can use an equivalent visual scripting action such as in Playmaker. This video showed how to write a quest using the message system. In the next video, we'll make a quest with a counter.